Ladies, oh my god. Oh my god. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Rose here, if you didn't know. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about my mental health story and my journey. So well, let's go into the video. <laughs> So I'm going to start all the way from when my mum passed away, which was in 2014. It was February of 2014. So that was really, really difficult for me. It was a difficult time for all my family. And I don't remember it very well because I was only six years old. But um, as I got older and I'm getting older, more memories and things are starting to come back to me. So most of you probably know, but if you're new here, then you might not. But now you do. So yeah, that was a really sad time. And I... I think the reason for most of my mental health problems is because of that. It's really hard sometimes because especially when people post online of like going out with my mum and stuff and like Mother's Day and then like having lunch. That's really hard to see as well because it's kind of like I don't really have that and I kind of had to grow up without a mum which has been really hard and um, especially because she didn't see me at my first boyfriend, I didn't get to tell her about my first kiss or anything like that which was really really difficult and she also didn't get to see me move into senior school which is really sad and yeah I think that is really sad because she can't come to my wedding, We can't. she can't like be there when I get married and I don't know, I think that's the main thing in my life which has been the hardest and I know many of you probably won't be able to actually comprehend what it feels like to lose a mum because obviously most of you have still got a mum and she's still here <laughs> and you still come home every day and you're like hi mum and lots of people take that for granted but I think the one thing that I've learned in life is to never take things for granted because the next minute they just won't be there. So I would say her passing away has started my whole mental health journey. So when I was around 9 or 10 that's when I started noticing when I had the symptoms of depression and anxiety. The main thing that I remember was I was on a holiday and I was in Spain and I literally couldn't move out of bed and it was the worst thing ever because I was just like so demotivated and I was just so sad and at the time I didn't really know why but now I know it was the pressure. That was kind of the main like hint for me that I was actually really struggling at that point and that's the thing that I remember from being the start of my journey with depression. I got admitted into CAMS when I was 10 and I've been with them ever since but I got discharged last week which I was really happy about so that's why I'm making this video today because I feel like I've kind of finally mainly recovered from all of my past traumas and it's just great. I remember once we were on a holiday in the cruise we were going to America and I was so sad I wrote down in my notes and then there's another one as well yeah, so I used to write down a lot how I was feeling, which really helped me kind of work through my emotions and stuff, which I think is also a really good tip if you are struggling with your thoughts and stuff, is that it really helps to write it down, because like me, I can look back on it like I'm showing you guys, um, and also it just is really nice in yourself as well, because it makes your brain feel a little bit less crowded. I used to not be able to leave the house without putting foundation on, and I literally couldn't even go to the shop without putting foundation on, like it was really, really bad, um, and I used to have really bad anxiety like leaving my bed and stuff and I used to really really struggle going out to friends and stuff so I wouldn't be able to meet them I kind of like um distance myself from everyone and kind of isolate myself in my own little bubble um because I literally hated going out to social situations I'd always stay in bed and I just would hate it so much that's what I found has been really really difficult for me over the past couple of years getting over the worries of what people are thinking about you and stuff and being able to literally walk down the street without messing with your hair or something because you think you look really bad and you think that people are looking at you I thought that's been the hardest thing that I've had to overcome but I've overcome it now which is great but it's still kind of there a little bit. So when I first tried to kill myself I actually wrote a note and I've got it here. Um, I'm not gonna like show it but like there that was my note that I wrote. When I was 11 I tried to kill myself that was the first time. It wasn't that bad um, it's not as bad as some of my attempts, but that one was not great. I was only 11 years old, which is quite young, and I did write a note and everything, which was not great. So when I was in year 7, which was after I started 
getting like down because I used to be really 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 bad I used to have to be really like mental in like year six like I was just like such a mental child like not like psycho but just really like sad and like really depressed and oh my god it was just really bad like it was just not a good childhood for me at all I think I probably have one of the worst childhoods you can literally ever have like it was just really traumatic when I moved into year seven and um, I developed an eating disorder so when I was 12 I developed anorexia I really really struggled with food and I'd used to track down all my food and everything that I ate and I used to be really really harsh on myself and it was like it was the worst thing ever because I used to literally scream at myself inside my head it was horrible I've got so many diaries of what I eat literally like scream at myself in the writing it was really really bad um I've got like one here. So the first week I ate 226 calories and then the second week I ate 377. That was like my first two weeks of eating disorder. That was what my meal plans used to look like. So that was like right at the start when um I first started developing like Anna and stuff. That was like the first start. So I'd used to eat like blueberries for breakfast. I'd have like cucumber sticks for lunch and then nothing for dinner. Yeah, so I've got like more books upstairs which are like me um, and what I ate and stuff. And they were horrible. Like I don't even want to show you them because I literally wanted to throw it away. This is my bookmark. <laughs> so I could see, oh God, it was so bad. I was literally 12, like. I once didn't eat for three days. I think that's like the worst thing that I've probably ever done. Like I didn't eat for three days. Like that was really bad. And I dropped weight really, really fast. And like, I, I think I was six stone at one point and I'm now 11 stone. So you can kind of see the difference, like five stone difference. Like I literally, I always used to like stand up and then I just like literally pass out. I used to be so, so skinny. I'll put some pictures on the screen now. like see you can see my rib cage and then also like my collarbones as well oh no it was not good um and I used to like lie down and I could like feel my heart beating and like myself breathing it was so bad I used to have a lot of thin spo so I used to like on my Instagram I used to save loads of thin spo and stuff I'd like try and trigger myself I don't know what on earth was going on but it was like multi-fandom so it was like multi-fandom eating disorder and stuff it was really weird I don't know what on earth was doing but I actually really like those videos like I actually really like them but they really triggered me and I feel like that's why my eating disorder did get really bad because I was really influenced by TV programs and stuff which is not good um, and then I had to go into hospital three times I think it was one of them I nearly had to be put on a drip that was really bad um, and then they wouldn't let me see myself when they weighed me they'd have to turn me around it was probably one of the worst things ever like I used to literally just want to cry all the time I had really 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 bad skin it was really bad because my hormones were literally all over the place I lost my period I didn't have my period for about five months honestly I was literally 12 years old like it's crazy now I think back on it it's just like I was 12 <laughs> like it was really bad I used to be really obsessive because when I put my mind to something I do it there's literally nothing to like nothing can get me away I'll do it and that's it and I'm really really focused and that's what was really bad for me I used to self-harm loads like really 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 bad and I had loads of bandages and stuff I've got a little like bandage box I used to come into school with bandages all over my arms people were like oh my god what happened and I'd be like fuck me <laughs> so that was really bad and um, I had to get this emergency counsellor at CAMS which specialises in eating disorders and she was really really full on with me so when I was probably at my worst point in my journey with eating disorder she was like fully horrible to me it scared me so much she was like if you don't eat and if you don't follow this meal plan I'm gonna um I'm gonna admit you to hospital you won't be able to see your friends you won't be able to go to school you obviously can't concentrate in lessons you can't even walk down the corridor without wanting to pass out and she was like she literally made me burst out crying it was awful she was literally really like scary and she was really serious she was like if you don't eat this you're gonna I'm gonna admit you to hospital you're gonna be on a drip you won't be able to go to school you won't be able to see your friends you won't be able to compete in any sporting activities and I love netball then and she was like you won't be able to do any of that and I was like 
it was really bad and then i had to go to school afterwards and i was literally bawling my eyes out and my head of year mrs thompson would make me come into the, her room her like office thing every lunch and she made me sit down and she made me eat this sandwich that we get from the cafeteria and she'd be like you've got to eat this before you go because i'm not letting you go otherwise and I'd literally have to sit there and eat my sandwich with her because she would not let me go. They wouldn't let me compete in PE, so I wouldn't be able to do PE. I remember once I didn't eat for three days and then my dad emailed my sports teacher and she was like, he, he was like, Rose is not doing sport today. I'm not allowing her. She hasn't eaten in ages. I don't want her to pass out or anything. And then they come and got me out of my PE lesson. She was like, Rose, you're not doing sport today. Like, you need to go and get changed. And I was really sad. Like, I was literally like, oh my God. Like, that was really bad. To just be obsessed with losing weight like it got to the point now where like my dad would just stop calling me down for tea because I wasn't gonna eat it and then I'd like I used to do this thing where I used to like eat everything but I wouldn't swallow it and then I spit it out so I kind of had like the taste in my mouth oh my god all these memories are just going back to me oh my god I'm really sad talking about this and then I used to like make myself sick in the toilet so I used to like if I'd eat something like if I'd eat like a full meal or something I'd literally make myself throw up and it was awful and I used to like stick a toothbrush yeah so I used to make myself sick all the time and I was really really obsessive I'd it got to the point where like 10 calories would be like really scary for me and I used to just like I couldn't even eat anything like I could barely even face myself eating like 10 calories because I thought that was loads and I now eat 2,000 like um but yeah I know I used to eat like four grapes a day for like I used to I, I think I did like eat four grapes a day for like a week and it was really bad I, I was losing my hair God, it was just awful and like it was just like this continuous cycle of over exercising and um, under eating throwing up overeating because i'd get really hungry and i just get to the point where i just overeat and then i'd be sick and then it'd just be like a continuous cycle and then i'd feel really bad and i wouldn't eat for a day it was just awful and i can't believe i put myself through that <laughs> it was really bad um, and then I got admitted to hospital and they were like, right, you need to eat this sandwich and if you don't eat this sandwich and I'm not letting you leave, you're going to have to stay overnight um, and I'm going to put you on a trip. And that was really bad. My dad was like, Rose, I'm really worried about you. Like, you're going to have to go on a trip if you don't eat because I was really, really malnourished. I used to have to get my blood taken all the time and like if I had to stand up, I'd just literally just pass out. Like, it was really bad. It was so bad of me, right? I used to be like to my friends, can we not go to lunch today because I'm not going to eat anything like can we not go to lunch and I used to make them not go to lunch because I don't want to eat anything that was really bad I used to literally skip breakfast eat no lunch and then if I did eat lunch it'd be with Miss Thomas and I used to have to like break off my salad and then I'd come home and I'd eat no tea it was just really bad um so yeah that was my anorexia story I finally have recovered from that which I'm really really happy about because anorexia is probably the hardest thing it it's just awful it's so obsessive so compulsive and it's just the worst thing ever but yeah so in year eight and year nine i had really really bad anxiety so i wasn't really depressed that much i kind of got rid of my depression and kind of overcame it but i did have really bad anxiety in year eight and that was like probably the worst thing ever so i had my cams person called sarah and i had her ever since I was in year eight ever since up till now until I finally got signed off. But yeah, I had her for literally three years um, and, it, and my anxiety used to be so, so bad. I literally couldn't leave the house. Like it was ridiculous. Like I had so many like coping strategies and stuff she made me do and it was so bad. Like most of the time I'd have to like stay home from school because I literally couldn't face going in. Like it was so bad and it, I'd just completely isolate myself. Like I'd just always be in my bed and I'd have the blind clothes my room would be an absolute tip I literally you couldn't even see a floor my blind was just closed my room was completely dark I would not get out of my bed and um, I used to go to sleep at like 4am in the morning and wake up at like 4 in the afternoon it was just really really bad I had a really bad eating schedule and stuff 
um, and I think probably that was a really really difficult time for me as well especially those two years because it was like kind of transitioning from year seven until the, in, up until like the higher years and stuff where you start doing more fun stuff with your friends and stuff and you always like invite me out and I'd be like yeah like I'm not really sure I want to go um, because I just I'd just be so anxious I'd just be so anxious and I used to have this little like black thing it was like this like elastic and I used to like pull it whenever I get like nervous um and it was just it was really bad this was um something I drew when I was struggling with anorexia um it's all about like oh I'm not hungry all these mental disorders I really really bad mental health when I was like nine and ten like I just used to be I used to just like write everything I've got loads of like notes and stuff that I used to just write my whole book is literally <laughs> it's just filled with notes like it's just full of them This was to do with my anorexia. What my family don't understand is I need to be skinny. I need to be able to look in the mirror and actually be happy with my body. I need to be able to weigh myself and smile as the numbers appear on the screen. I want to feel like a feather and be able to wear anything I want. I want someone to pick me up and think, wow, she's light in a good way. I need these things to happen so people can actually actually notice me instead of noticing me for the flat girl when these things happen i will finally be able to smile and say to myself well done you've achieved your goal so yeah i used to write so many notes and stuff god i've got more down here I just used to write notes and notes and notes and notes and notes and it literally just really helped me clear my mind and kind of talk about how I was feeling and um, I feel like that's the main thing that I've realized and like I've noticed throughout my whole journey is that writing notes down really has helped me kind of work through all the thoughts inside my brain and stuff which I think is a really good tip if you guys are watching this is to take away the fact that if you write stuff down it does really help and like after you've overcome any disorder you're going through you can look back on them and be like but yeah it's really bad it's like i used to be really really confused and because i was so young i couldn't understand why i was feeling these things i couldn't understand why i couldn't get out of bed i couldn't understand any of these things and um, and i used to just constantly write down I don't really know what to say. I'm so confused that I don't even understand what's going on in my own brain. And there's so many. Everywhere I go, I literally can't explain it. Anxiety and social anxiety are probably one of the hardest things to explain. And if you've never had or experienced it, you can't judge people or force them to go somewhere. I was just talking about how it felt like when I had social anxiety because it is probably one of the hardest things I've ever had. This is another suicide note. Back to my anxiety. I used to also found counting in your head is a really good coping mechanism to be able to calm yourself down. I feel like that really helped for me. When I remember when I started weightlifting, I still do that now, but when I first started, I used to track all my macros. And then I remember once I was literally sat in my bed and I was just crying because I went over my sugar limit by like two grams. That was really bad. And I don't know why, because it's fine to go over by 10 grams under or over, it doesn't matter so I don't know why I was crying about that and then I used to just cry about everything and then I used to just be so anxious and like I'd always feel like I was an absolute burden I used to feel like people would like get really annoyed by me and stuff and I used to feel like um I'd come and like sit down with people and then people would hate me and they just want me to leave and I think that's probably one of the main things that I've struggled with feeling like everybody hates me and really like I'm a burden and I feel like those are the two things I used to talk about all the time like I feel like I'm annoying you so much and like if I'd start snapchatting people and they like would be a bit dry or something I'd always be like oh my god like 
like I've done something wrong like do you hate me that was really bad but I finally kind of understood and I feel like what's helped really well with that is do you have any evidence that they don't like you and if you do well that's another story but if you don't have any evidence then like they have to have said something for you to actually be able to realise that they don't like you but if they haven't said anything you haven't showed any evidence or anything like they, they probably like you it's just inside your head it's literally just inside your head when i was 12 i tried to kill myself that was in year eight i cut all my arms and i took an overdose as well and then that was when i was struggling with um really bad anxiety then and then i tried to do it again in the january 2020 that was probably one of the most traumatic experiences i've ever had i was i took like loads of paracetamol and loads of random like pills I found and then I like took them all I was about 30 I put all the empty wrappers under my pillow and then I went to school the next day and it was so bad and my dad found them under my pillow and he rang up school and he was like I need Rose like get to the hospital right now like she's taken an overdose like she could literally pass out and like die at any minute and the nurse that she came running into my classroom she was like Rose you need to come with me like get all your stuff and I was like shit because I knew exactly what it was about and I was like oh my god that was really traumatic and then she was like how are you feeling like you need to lie down you take your blood pressure i need to make sure you're all right and then to be rushed off to hospital i had to stay in there for two days i think it, it was two days um that was really really traumatic my arms were just they were like red like red it was really bad i remember the second time i tried i went in an ambulance to the hospital so i can say that i've been in an ambulance but not for a good reason and then I really, really struggled with low mood, struggling. Like I used to be how I was when I was like 10 years old, when I used to just like not be able to get out of bed. That kind of happened again. And I used to, I was really struggling with that for about like half a year. And I think that's probably been really hard for me. Just not having any motivation to do anything at all. Not being able to eat full meals, not being able to get out of my bed, clean my room, just do every like not day to day stuff. Like I think the longest time I haven't had a shower is one and a half weeks and that was when I literally couldn't even get out of bed. Like and then when I came out of hospital for my last attempt and um, they suggested getting a book where you write down how you're feeling and stuff. Um so this book is literally just full with writing and stuff so like how i felt feel and stuff like stuff that's happened at school that's made me upset and then it's got like drawings in it it's literally just full up and then that's kind of just like pieces of, like the piece of paper i used to write on but instead it's all in a book i wasn't supposed to do this but i wrote down like ways to kill myself so i've been looking at forms of suicide and i was taking a random video and did that thing where you where your neck arteries pop out and i thought what would happen if i cut them so i searched it up and, I, and it said instant death and it also said it's a rare form of suicide so now i know what my next attempt will be or when i actually want to die Literally, no therapy math is working. Am I broken? I'm sorry, but I want to die. I don't care who I might hurt because they've already hurt me. I feel depressed again. I don't know what to do. It's 1.30 a.m. and I'm watching some videos. That was May, 5th of May, 2020. Next suicide attempt, cut my vein in my wrist, both wrists, try really hard, because I always like, I don't know, it kind of cringes me a bit. Overdose much more than last time, that was pathetic. Bang my head, drown myself. Don't tell anyone until the next day whether that's the school or what. 26 tablets is a good amount of paracetamol to take. And over like this time of when I did try to kill myself and also around like before and after that, even after I'd recovered from anorexia, I was really, I did really struggle with my body weight. Um, I used to feel like people thought I was really fat all the time. Um, that's 
those two pages are all about body weight i'll read it out it says my brand new melville order came that i'd be waiting for weeks to come the first thing that i tried on was a shirt and it barely fit the zip wouldn't zip up and i felt so disgusted with myself then i tried on a crop top and some joggers the joggers came up past my ankles and was really tight around my waist the top showed all my tummy and i felt so upset i put on the belt that i got and all my tummy flap hung over it i wanted to put on a jumper to show even daddy but i didn't Anyway, later on, Eve gave me a hug and I started crying. I was so upset that nothing fit like it used to and everything looked disgusting on me. I just don't know what to do. I try and work out and eat healthy, but I just become fatter and more upset. And then the other one I wrote was, I can't do it anymore. I can't. I hate the way my body looks. I can't bear to look at myself in the mirror. I hate the way my hair hangs down, the way my eyes glare back at me. I'm literally stuck. I don't know what the fuck is going on with me. I literally can't do anything. I can barely speak, let alone move. Daddy's constantly asking me what's wrong, but I don't know. It's the past couple of days, I'm just numb. I keep zoning out and I can't zone back in. I'm having these major worrying stages where I'm zoned out and I don't know what's going on. I f it's like I'm a visitor in my own mind. I can't cry, I can't move, I can't speak. I can't do anything. I lie in bed all day, not having any energy to move because I'm so mentally tired. I can't sleep at night, it's awful. It's this wave of sadness that has just hit me on the head at the full speed. Everything seems like a struggle. Even getting into bed is hard. I want to scream, I want to cry, I want this to be over. God, I want to die, please help me. Someone, I don't know what's going on. I'm only 12, I can't deal with this. Please. And then that one's about my body weight as well. She says, I hate my body, I really, really do. I hate the way it looks when I look in the mirror. I hate the way my boobs sag in the outfit and like other people's. I hate the way my tummy is so fat and it never seems to get any skinnier. I hate the way my legs aren't as thick as I want them to be. I hate the way my bum never grows, the way I can't fit into skirts that are only just bought. I hate my arms, scared from f scar from failed attempts, no muscle on them. I hate my face, all the acne scarring and the way my eyes sag and droop. I hate my back from all the spots on it never seeming to go away. But most of all, I hate the way that whatever I do, it's never good enough for myself. Yeah, so yeah, I did really struggle with my body weight and I still do struggle with it a little bit now, but not as much as I used to. It used to be really, really bad. But yeah, so here are a few things, like sheets that I was actually going to read out because I was just having a look at them. And I feel like it really helps to portray how I used to feel um, because I can't actually... I can't remember like all the details because it was like three years ago. But these were all written in 2019. Here. Can you see that? Rose 2019. This was when I was 12, I think. So this is how I felt when I was dealing with my depression and my anxiety when I was like I was in year seven. So this is kind of how I felt on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, here we go. This is what I wrote. I, I don't know. I guess I'm just so tired of this all. I'm so tired of waking up every morning and having to face the fact that I have to repeat everything over again, just like the previous days. I'm so tired of thinking and crying. I'm so tired of living with an empty hole in the pit of my stomach. I'm so fucking tired and I'm alone. It's currently three in the morning and I should be asleep, but I can't get to sleep. I overthink everything and worry too much. I don't have any energy to do anything anymore except to sit in my bed, either asleep, crying, eating or watching something. I can't see my friends and always make up excuses why I can't go, but instead I'm sat in my bed feeling crap. You probably think I'm being lazy, but the truth is I'm scared. I'm scared of going to places that I don't know and I'm even scared of going to places I do know. I feel physically sick going anywhere because I'm constantly worrying if people are looking at me, judging me, or me doing something utterly stupid and everyone hating me. I'm scared of meeting new people, not knowing what they're thinking, and I have to. Li I have literal panic attacks everywhere I go. I literally can't explain it. I'll just say something. Just imagine yourself feeling sick all the time, wherever you go, somewhere, or whenever you feel nervous about something. Imagine that, but ten times worse. It's a living hell. This is why I stay in bed most of the time. I never leave the house because it's so tiring, making, and it makes you feel so shit about yourself. I could write pages and pages of how I feel, of what's going on inside my fucking head, but it wouldn't be too boring. So here's the thing. I really, really need help, but no one's helping me, and I'm alone. If you're reading this, please help me. I am so tired of living like this, it's torture and I don't know if I can keep going. So that was when I was 11 and I'm still here now, which is amazing. 
been really proud of myself for that. I used to be really like sad and like um whenever i used to go like it literally happened in summer so it genuinely literally happened in june this year and um, we were going to meet some friends and i literally could not do it and i could not face going and i had like, a massive panic attack in the car couldn't stop crying it was really really bad and whenever i used to get really nervous about going to social situations i used to have a little panic attack i remember once we went to see our cousins for new year's and i couldn't go I literally couldn't go. We were literally right outside the house, broke down, couldn't stop crying, literally were hyperventilating, like it was the worst thing ever. I just have really, really bad panic attacks whenever I go somewhere and I was really nervous. And that's kind of what having anxiety is like. You literally can't go anywhere without literally having a panic attack. Like it's the worst thing ever, honestly. Um, and then this is my depression. This is kind of like what sums up my depression a little bit. Do you ever feel so shit, like so shit you don't know what to do except lie there? You stare up at the ceiling needing to cry but no tears come out, so instead you lie there feeling your heart break into pieces. And the reason why you can't cry is because you're so broken and too upset to even have a tear slide down your cheek that you just lie there letting everything take over you. When people go through a depressive episode they feel so shit all the god time time, but what they don't realise is that that is what someone with depression feels every single fucking day. Man, it's torture. I don't know where to go. I feel lost all the damn time. I have no place that feels like home and nowhere where I can truly be myself, except at one in the morning with tears rolling down my face, with no sound seeming to come out in case someone hears. I feel so alone in a crowded room full of people, always not feeling open to share how I'm feeling, mostly because I don't trust the people around me, unless I'm drunk, of course. But even then, they don't know half of the shit that's going on inside my brain. Writing about it seems to be the only place where I feel comfortable talking about it. To be honest, I don't understand half the stuff that goes on inside my brain. Most of the time, I lie in bed motionless with earphones plugged in and me letting the empty feeling inside my stomach finally take over. I think that when someone hurts you so much, you get used to the pain. I get cold as slut, a whore. I get cold fat all the time. Mostly on my Tell Me account. It's a place where anyone can say whatever they think about you on, on there and honestly. And you can either choose to accept and move on or try about or cry about it and show that you're weak. I do both of those, but the crying part inside my head. Even though I'm used to people calling me this stuff, it still hurts, you know? Knowing that you'll never be good enough for anyone, not even yourself. And when it all gets too much, you either cut yourself and let the blade dig into your skin with you sat there watching the blood trickle, trickle down, still not feeling satisfied to so curl up crying for what feels like hours. Or you run screaming and crying, not wanting to let anyone know you're upset. So when a car drives past, you pretend everything's fine, not debating on whether you're going to take your life or not. I've done countless things to try and take the pain away, but nothing seems to work out and the pain just gets worse. The empty feeling inside is the worst feeling you can get because no matter how much you feed it or if you starve, it's always there. Everyone in society is comparing themselves to others. You dye your hair to look different or you try a new style of clothes to look cooler, but in reality it never works. You just get called a slut for wearing a bikini. You get called anorexic if you're too skinny and you get called fat if you see eating something healthy unhealthy. Society nowadays is awful because you can never be yourself. I think that is so sad because I literally remember sitting right here wanting to kill myself. I literally remember sitting right here, wanting to die, wanting all of the pain and suffering to go away. And I think that is so hard. Looking back on all these like things that I wrote and all my letters and suicide notes and stuff, because I went through so much as a child. I was literally. Sick. literally sick I think that's probably the hardest thing about this all having to go without a mum 
and like when like you've got your parents and then you've got you and your siblings and when someone's taken away it literally breaks the whole family and I think that's so sad I think that <clears throat> it's so hard because because I've been so through so much as a child that I haven't had the proper childhood that most kids have had and when I look at people I think I'm so jealous of you and I think that when something that traumatic happens to you it creates all these more problems as you get older and that's why I've struggled with so much because it's had such a massive impact on me half of the time I didn't even realise And I think it's so hard because I know how it feels when you're literally when you're literally sat in your bed and you're like I can't do this anymore and you're so sad to the point where you feel like the only way out is through suicide and I think that is probably the saddest thing because there is hope and there is a way out and suicide is not the answer because <sighs> there is so much to live for and I if I if my attempt had worked when I was 11 I wouldn't be sat here today and I wouldn't be making this video and I wouldn't be discharged from calms which is I think I think that's the most amazing thing that has probably ever happened in my life before because I never thought that I would be able to sit here right now and make this video that I've overcome depression, anxiety and anorexia and I think losing a mum and losing a granny because my granny literally passed away like a couple of weeks ago and that has been really hard <laughs> that's been really hard so that is why I have not been uploading because the past few weeks have just been shit so that's why I've actually got no videos on my account for a while like three weeks because I've just had a shit week and that's why I've made this video today mm -hmm mainly to cover up most of those reasons and yeah um i've actually got this little diary <laughs> got this little diary which is really nice why is it I say I've got eight new friends including me which I'm sure you would have loved I got highest in the class in my biology test last week and 17 out of 18 on my history essay so they just fit in that you've actually passed away and I can't stop crying I miss you so much I'm so sad. <laughs> so I can't come and tell you how well I'm doing at school that's kind of like my little way I'm kind of communicating with her so yeah I've had a shit shit childhood like I just I put myself through so much and it's just so sad thinking about it now and looking back on it now and I feel like this is why I've been so scared to make this video and I feel like this is why it's probably one of the hardest videos I'm ever gonna make because it, it it's a variety of things and there's so many people out there struggling they don't even realise you can walk past them on the street you won't even realise how much they're struggling like I used to go to school I used to be like the happy friend like I used to be the friend that made everybody laugh at my old school I always used to be the one that made everyone laugh and if I wasn't there at school one day everyone had a shit day and they'd always come and tell me that and yeah and I feel just it's just so shit because I never realised how strong I was 
as a child going through all of this and I'm only 14 I think it's incredible it's just it's just I don't nobody would come and stand here right in front of me now having no clue about me and could tell me every single thing that's happened that I've just told you guys N nobody would know because they've got nothing, nothing about me that's why I think mental illness is so shit because it's not like a broken arm it's not like people can see that you're struggling and that your hurt is inside it's inside and no one no one knows no one will know if you don't tell them and I feel like that's so hard because there's so much shit going on inside your head that no one knows about and I just feel like that's the worst thing about mental illnesses because they destroy you they absolutely destroy you so I am discharged from camps now so on the 8th of November on the 8th of November 2021 I am discharged from CAMS. I am really, really happy. I am literally buzzing. Like, I've gone through all of this for like five years. Finally been discharged. Finally gotten over all the shit that's happened. And I am, I feel better than ever. I'm really, I am going through a bereavement at the moment. I am really struggling with that. And I am literally, I can't stop crying about it. Like, it's really it's really hit me hard like it really has hit me hard um so that's why no videos have been uploaded because i just have been really upset but i am um, discharged and i'm really really happy um because i feel like that's the thing that i needed i feel like that's what i needed to finally be able to say that i made it and yeah so that is my mental health story it's i have never i've probably the only people that i've told this like everything that i've just told you now is my cans workers and that's it no one else knows so i'm putting it out on the internet today and I feel like that's going to be a massive step for me because people i've literally just unraveled myself like everybody knows everything about me now which i think is quite scary um but yeah so that is my mental health story that is my childhood shit childhood and yeah i don't know when my next video will be uploaded but when it is make sure to watch it make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you then thanks for watching this video bye guys